Hello YouTubers, I'll explain the early history of the progressive movement. I think you'll see that it's shockingly like today with one critical difference. We'll talk more about that difference in my next video. For now, I'll simply say that the early progressive movement was largely a Christian movement and that if progressives wanted to return to their roots, they would do well to remember it. Christians would do equally well to remember it because as Christians, the progressive movement is part of our history. This video will largely focus on how the conditions then were much like the conditions now, and how Christians responded to those conditions in the past. Today, many preachers of God and economics extol a form of capitalism that is much similar to lazy fare, just like the American preachers of the 1800s. It has led to the creation of giant corporations like Amazon and Walmart, comparable to the power of standard oil around the turn of the 20th century. By the way, standard oil is still around and packing just as much influence. It's called Exxon Mobil now. It's the second largest company in the United States by revenue. Much like the Industrial Revolution of the past, automation has resulted in improved efficiency and fewer jobs. Today, we even outsource many jobs to foreign countries. And much like the past, America has experienced a wave of immigration for the last 50 or so years, what some refer to as the fourth wave. Much like the past, America has recently experienced a rapid growth in cities. All at one time, America is becoming more corporate, more urban, and more ethnically diverse. Americans are losing jobs, and many immigrants have come in during the last 50 years, though that seems to be tapering off. More people are moving to the city to find work, and giant corporations rule our leaders. These were the exact same conditions in which the progressive movement formed in the late 1800s. The creation of the camera allowed people to photograph the atrocious conditions of the poor, created by the rise in poverty that the rapid growth of cities from industrialization and corporatism had brought. One of America's first photographers, Jacob Rees became famous by publishing photos that showed the living conditions of the poor. This is comparable to smartphones and the internet allowing us to share images today. In pretty much every way, our conditions are similar to the conditions of the late 1800s and early 1900s, only in a modern world. Sure, we have more technology and better access to goods, but the Industrial Revolution provided that to the people of that time, so technology is relative. The underlying economic and social conditions, however, are far similar, and that's why a strongly progressive movement has now formed and continues to grow, just like the beginnings of the original progressive movement. Today, they're typically called Justice Democrats. One critical difference between today's progressive movement and the progressive movement of the past is that the past progressive movement was largely a Christian movement. Christians were a very sizable majority of the progressive movement, where today's progressive movement is largely a secular movement. For example, an important leader in the early progressive movement was Washington Gladden, a preacher and journalist. He published a book that brought him fame and a good deal of hatred for supporting the right of workers to organize into unions, titled Working People and Their Employers. Along with many other accomplishments, he helped form the NAACP. I've provided a link to his book in the description box. While there are too many leaders to name, it was Christians that originally became progressives, likely in church, as they became persuaded by pastors that taught the social gospel. It was through the spreading of the social gospel that progressive numbers continued to grow. It grew until even atheists and other religions started identifying as progressives. To try and make their rhetoric more palatable to non-Christians, some Christians started to secularize their rhetoric. While this tactic worked with secularists, it didn't work so well with Christians. Eventually, the rapid growth of secularists in the movement allowed them to take over the movement. Accordingly, the social gospel was largely abandoned in churches. My next video will show what can be gained from evangelicals rejoining with progressives slash justice democrats. Thanks for your time. If you found this video helpful, please show your support by subscribing. Thanks once again.